Today, I want to talk about why the SEC is terrified of the AMC squeeze. I want to explain what they're trying to do to stop the squeeze, how they know that it's coming, but how they can't do anything to stop it. So stay tuned, and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, I want to start by explaining how the Fed has just caused a liquidity drain, which is going to cause the wider market to crash, triggering the AMC squeeze. Gregory has just tweeted saying, well, 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 after 253 consecutive trading days of reverse repos over $2 trillion, it's now down below, back to only $1.9 trillion. This is the first day in 253 days we've seen the reverse repo facility properly decreasing, now down below $2 trillion. But what does that actually mean for the wider market and for the wider market liquidity? Finance Lancelot tweeted saying, you're missing my point. Every time the Fed has provided overnight liquidity to the banking system, like they did in 2020 and 2008, the system has stabilised. So providing more and more money in reverse repos has actually helped stabilise the system. But then they've pulled that liquidity away right before the crisis hit, actually causing the crisis and amplifying it and making it significantly worse. And importantly, they're doing the exact same thing this time around. If you look back into the past, every time the Fed has pulled some form of liquidity facility, aka the reverse repo facility, or any kind of banking system facilities, straight after they've pulled that liquidity, the market crashes. And that's what we're now starting to see, as the Fed is pulling this reverse repo liquidity, now down from $2.4 trillion to below $2 trillion. And it's because they're using the cash in this reverse repo facility to rebuild the Treasury General Account. It says Treasury and Liquidity. So far, the TGA or Treasury General Account Rebuild has been funded 100% by reverse repo drain. Treasury's up $80 billion and RRPs are down by $85 billion since June 1st. So the more money the Fed drains from this reverse repo facility, the closer we get to a market crash and the closer we get to the empty squeeze. But so why is the SEC so terrified of the squeeze? Why do they not want it to happen? And why do they actively try and prevent it from happening? Well, as Donahue George tweeted, he said, does the SEC refuse to aggressively police the hedgies because they want corporate jobs after their time working for the SEC? You may remember this scene from The Big Short where Jamie's brother's girlfriend is currently working for the SEC, but she's trying to float her resume to big banks like Goldman Sachs because she wants a different job that pays more money. And she basically says she never investigates any of these big banks that should be under active investigation by the SEC because she wants a job for them. You may remember she then starts kicking her feet and says actually the SEC doesn't investigate much anymore since the SEC budget cuts. And as I mentioned in my video earlier, FINRA currently has the majority of their retirement savings plans invested directly into BlackRock and in Vanguard. So therefore, FINRA employees effectively have an active interest in not investigating BlackRock and Vanguard and not allowing the squeeze because they want to keep their retirement plans. Obviously, if the squeeze happens and the market crashes, their retirement plans will effectively be destroyed or at least damaged significantly because they're invested into BlackRock and into Vanguard. And if BlackRock and Vanguard end up taking billions of dollars in losses, that effectively translates directly to FINRA employees losing their retirement plans. So the SEC is actively worried about the squeeze because it means they could lose a significant portion of their pension. And it also means they likely won't ever receive a job at Citadel or at one of these big banks. And actually, the Fed knows this liquidity drain is happening and knows the market is likely going to continue crashing because, as Jerome Powell said, the Fed is carefully monitoring the banking system. Also, guys, you can currently get a guaranteed free share of Tesla or of Google and a $100 cash reward by signing up to Moomoo using the link in the description below. If you just want that $100 cash reward and five free shares, all you have to do is deposit $100. If you want that guaranteed free share of Tesla or of Google and $100 cash reward and 15 free shares, just deposit $5,000. You could always use those free shares and cash reward to buy more shares of AMC and GameStop stop if you so chose to. Why would the Fed need to carefully monitor the banking system if the banking system was now fine and the banking crisis was over? Probably because the banking crisis is indeed not over.
That's why they're monitoring the banking system very, very closely and monitoring the stock market as they start pulling liquidity from that reverse repo facility. And the reason why the Fed is so concerned about the health of the banking system is because they know the squeeze is coming. GameStop used short squeezes as their first example of what can cause extreme volatility in the company's stock price. G-Man said, coincidence? I think not. Obviously, we know that short squeezes do indeed cause significant fluctuations in the price of AMC and at GameStop, and we also know that short squeezes are indeed not over. GameStop themselves are obviously preparing for another upcoming short squeeze by listing it right at the very top of this section, risks related to the price of our common stock. And again, that's likely why the Fed is carefully monitoring the banking system in case all of a sudden a squeeze happens. And again, we know the shorts and the Fed and the SEC are actively trying to prevent it because AMC is literally the one stock where shorts paid more fees on shorting than the total market cap of a company. We know these shorts pay hundreds of percentage points every single year, if not thousands of percentage points every single year, just to continue shorting AMC. And they have done at least in this hundreds of percentage points over the last six months. We know they've been shorting for two years, if not two years and significantly longer. But this borrow fee has been over 100% for the last six months consecutively. So these shorts over the last six months have paid their entire short position at least once, if not multiple times over in borrowing fees. And AMC is literally one of the only stocks where shorts paid more fees on shorting than the total market cap of the company because they're trying everything they can to suppress the squeeze, but they know they're stuck and they know that it is eventually coming. And it's now getting to the point where these shorts are getting more and more desperate to short, literally offering to pay people to short certain shares. This account called Leverage Shares ETPs says you can now get up to 10.48% positive yield for simply holding some of our minus three times, minus two times, and minus one times ETPs. So an ETP is an exchange traded product, like those Leverage Inverse Single Share ETFs. AK like those short AMC ETFs where you can short AMC minus three times, minus two times, or just minus one time. And these companies are now literally paying you 10% per year in interest just to short their AMC ETFs. It says Leverage Shares is the only issuer that pays investors on short exposures. And learn more about our range of 70 plus inverse EDPs now. So they've got 70 plus different shares that you can currently short or that you can currently get paid to short. This again, as I said, just shows exactly how desperate these shorts are to try and recruit more people into shorting AMC. It's because these shorts know they're vastly outmatched and vastly outgamed by us AMC retail investors. So they're effectively trying to recruit more people into their hedges and into their shorting circles to short AMC. Again, I think all this really does is convince me and convince us that we are indeed right, and if anything, that we are indeed winning. If these shorts are trying to beg people and offering to pay them to short AMC, that clearly shows they are indeed losing. And finally, one of the reasons why the SEC are most scared is because they know the Credit Suisse, or now UBS short position, is about to unravel. Credit Suisse, in their last dying breath, tried to spread FUD about AMC with their $1 AMC price prediction article. That desperation just smells like a huge illegal synthetic short position. Their FUD is not a glitch. And as Peter Han tweeted, he said just an information item, UBS has officially acquired Credit Suisse as of today. They've noted they intend to de-risk part of the Credit Suisse platform and have noted unexpected costs of $16 billion to complete the transaction. Where this $16 billion includes legacy exposures from Archegos so far remains to be seen, but suspicion by myself and others that this may include swap exposure on GameStop and AMC. It's likely UBS are going to try and unravel this short position and take on this $16 billion liability or $16 billion hit with the help of the Swiss government. Again, if UBS do try and de-risk and close out of this short position, it would indeed likely cause the GameStop and AMC short squeeze, but they may always try and offload this short position onto another unsuspecting hedge fund. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.